Good morning. This is Crystal Woods with Seasons in the Vine, and it's Fresh Friday. And we're going to pick up halfway through Nehemiah 9. And I hope that this series is blessing you because first, the Word of God should bless you, and that it's actually showing you how to be restored, how to walk things out, and so in the last, uh, and how to persevere. So the front end of the book, we have this, this perseverance and the being on the wall and staying on the wall and doing the work of God with a sword in one hand and your tools in the other, and we just see the people rising up, and now that that's accomplished, they need to be restored in their souls, and so they celebrate the Festival of the Booths or the Festival of the Tabernacles, the shelters. It has lots of different names. But that was a that was a reminder of who God has been in the past. And they wanted to already weep that day, but they were told not to. This is a day of celebration. The weeping was going to come. And then they get together and they hear the word of God. They hear the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, which are called the law. And they realize how far they have they have come um, away from God, how far they have moved away from him. And they're just overwhelmed with grief and the acknowledgement that they are so rebellious and stiff-necked and they have not been faithful. So one of the thing that one of the things that is super important is that we're called to be faithful. God has made a covenant with us. He's made a covenant with these people and he's kept up his end of the deal, but they're they're not keeping up their end of the deal. Now, this is a different covenant though. This is old covenant and so we have the new covenant and what we have is God inside of us, Holy Spirit that actually teaches us to be faithful. F um faithfulness is actually part of having this Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will grow fruit in you and faithfulness is part of that fruit. And so we're suddenly able to be consistent, steadfast people who always turn to the Lord through the empowering and the promptings of Holy Spirit. Now it requires our obedience. We have to obey still, but we have so much help in doing that. So I hope you're encouraged when you, when we go through the rest of this list and you're like, wow, they just didn't get it. We're not too far from that, but we do have a better option now. We live under the blood of Jesus and the grace of his cross. And so, and we've received Holy Spirit and we're actually able to rise up and be a people of covenant that can actually be faithful to the Lord. And so, whoop, I'm almost gonna knock my camera over. So that's where we want to pick up. So we left off just them recounting what happened in, in the Exodus. God provided for them amazingly well, like just supernatural provision. Even their feet didn't swell as they walked that long. So profound physical and um, health provision and food and water and just all kinds of things. So we're starting in verse 22. And you gave them kingdoms and peoples and allotted them to every corner. So they took the land and they had they had victory there. And right away we can think of the battle of Jericho and how the wall came down as they did what the Lord told them to do, a supernatural victory. And this is seen over and over again in different ways. So they took possession of the land of Shion, king of Heshbon, and the land of Og, king of Bashan. You multiplied their children as the stars of heaven, right? The stars of heaven are the promise of Abraham that you're going to have so many descendants. And you brought them into the land that you told their fathers to enter and possess. So the descendants went and possessed the land and you subdued before them the inhabitants of the land. So the Lord subdued before them the habit inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, and gave them into their hand with their kings and the peoples of the land that they might do with them as they would. And they captured fortified cities. Nothing they came against was too much for them because they were being obedient to God. They were listening when he said, go and take this land. You have it. I'm with you. And they captured fortified cities and a rich land and took possession of houses full of all good things. So they didn't have to work for anything. They just received what was already there, planted by someone else. Cisterns already hewn, vineyards, olive orchards, fruit trees in abundance. And they ate and they were filled and became fat and delighted themselves in your great goodness. So they're doing well. But then we see in 26, nevertheless, they were disobedient and rebelled against you and cast your law behind their backs and killed your prophets who had warned them in order to turn them back to you. And they committed great blasphemies. Wow. So this is huge. They get comfortable and they turn from the Lord. How many of you have lived that story before? 
I think it's familiar to all of us. And then what happens is, is we're only ever in that position with the Lord of just asking, asking, asking that he helps us and that he gives to us because we're not really being faithful. When's the last time you blessed the Lord? You blessed the Lord. You ministered to the Lord. You gave of your own heart to the Lord. You did what he asked you to do. Do you know obedience is better than sacrifice? He wants you to obey and honor what he is saying. But they rebelled. Therefore, you gave them into the hand of their enemies who made them suffer. So it's not God's fault that this cycle happens. He's not wanting it to happen, but they choose it every single time. And in the time of their suffering, they cried out to you and you heard them from heaven. And according to your great mercies, you gave them saviors who saved them from the hand of their enemy. We see this in the judges and the kings that they would just get this person, especially in the judges. You see like somebody would arrive on the scene. They would be able to demolish their enemies and then they were restored again. But then they would fall back in to the cycle of rebellion. It was their choice. They got comfortable. They walked away from God. But after they had rest, look, it's right there, 28, they did evil again before you and you abandoned them to the hand of their enemies so that they had dominion over them. Who is supposed to have dominion on the earth? The people of God. Not the people that don't belong to the Lord. The, we are to have dominion on the earth. But we forfeit it over when we do not honor the Lord, when we do not obey. Yet when they turned and cried to you, you heard from heaven and many times you delivered them according to your mercies. They weren't deserving of it, but God is merciful. So he just kept doing it. I hope you feel encouraged that no matter what you're in right now, no matter what has happened, turn to the Lord and let him be merciful to you and let him help you get out of it. And when you do get out of it, be faithful to him. And he warned them in turn to turn to turn them back to your law. Yet they acted presumptuously and did not obey your commandments, but sinned against your rules, which if a person does them, he shall live by them. And they turned a stubborn shoulder and stiffened their neck. Again, that pride. And they would not obey. Many years you bore with them. God is patient, patient. Many years he bore with them. That's the old covenant. He is so patient with us. And we have the blood of Jesus now between us and the wrath of God. That's amazing. You bore with them and warned them by your spirit through your prophets. The spirit rested on the prophets. They spoke for God. Turn back. Yet they would not give ear. Therefore, you gave them into the hand of the peoples of the land. Nevertheless, here it is again. In your great mercies, you did not make an end of them or forsake them. For you are a gracious and merciful God. That is who he is. That's why we want to be faithful to him because he's amazing and he's awesome. He's such a good father and he loves us. Now, therefore, our God, the great, the mighty, and the awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love, let not all the hardships seem little to you that has come upon us, upon our kings and our princes, our priests, our prophets, our fathers, and all of your people since the time of the kings of Assyria until this day. So now they're recalling how Israel fell and then Judah fell. You have been righteous in all that has come upon us, for you have dealt faithfully. You have dealt faithfully, and we have acted wickedly. So when he said, when they're saying they're let not all our hardship seems little to you, like where they're at now is they're still in a they're in a position of still slavery under the Persian Empire, and it's better than Babylon. It's better than Assyria, but they're not free. They don't have their own land. They're still bound. And so they're asking the Lord, like, as, as much as you've done for us, like, we, we need more from you. And we know the Lord is so willing. Even in our in their own kingdoms and amid your great goodness that you gave them and in the large and rich land that you set before them, they did not serve you or turn from their wicked works. So they're just recalling like, God, you've done it all. You've done it all, and we still just didn't obey. Behold, we are slaves this day. We're still in bondage to Persia. In the land that you gave to our fathers to enjoy its fruit. This isn't even Persian land. It's a, to belong to Israel. Isn't that terrible? And it's good gifts, and behold, we are slaves. And its rich yield goes to kings who you have set over us because of our sin. So they're not getting the rich yield of the beautiful land of milk and honey. It's going to the kings that are over them because of their sin. They rule over our bodies and over our livestock as they please, and we are in great distress. Because of all this, we make a firm covenant in writing. On the sealed document are the names of all our princes, our Levites, and our priests. So what I want you to see here is that 
they're getting serious about owning what has gone on. And they want the Lord's help and they know they need to acknowledge and turn from where they have been. And so when you're in your tough place, are you going to the Lord? Are you racking your brain trying to figure out how am I going to make this right? Instead of saying, Lord, I've messed up. How are you going to make this right? And what part do I need to play in that? What part do I need to own in that? Hopefully that makes sense. So I'm not going to read the names, but we are going to go through really quick. I'm not going to read them, but if you look at chapter 10, all the way down to verse 27, and we'll pick up in 28 next week, there's the list of the people that are on the document. On the seals are the names of Nehemiah the governor, and then on and on and on and on and on. So they are being accountable they're signing on the dotted line and this kind of covenant is actually it's not like a covenant um that god would strike with man this is a little bit different this is man offering to god faithfulness so this is actually coming from them and their desire to actually become faithful so it's a covenant built to be faithful to god that's amazing and so that's a recommitment to the lord do you need to recommit to the Lord? Do you need to acknowledge that you haven't been following him and that you want to start doing that today? And if this is just not for you, just know these are biblical prin principles to being restored so that when you're sitting across the table from somebody that's in a really tough place, you can begin to show them like, wow, okay, so how did we get here? Are we turning to the Lord for this? Are we just acknowledging what part we played or, or maybe we didn't play any part, but we need to have him heal us. That is on us, right? If something is off in us because of what's happened, we need to get healing from the Lord. And those cycles begin to break. Those brokenness cycles begin to break when we we do that. And so whatever this looks like for you, just keep in mind, these are kingdom principles. This is the way the kingdom of God works. And we're seeing it play out in this book of Nehemiah. I'll see you next week. We'll pick up on chapter 10, verse 28, and we're coming down to the home front of Nehemiah. And I can't wait to tell you what we're going to do next.